Hey, what's up guys? Nick the Informative Fisherman here on behalf of Savage Gear. Super stoked to introduce you guys to our new Ned Rig program. It's been a while, everybody knows what a Ned Rig is. And I've always had these changes in my mind. The designer Jose over there had these changes in his mind. And I'm like, dude, this is about to get real. Put some great baits together, a new style of Ned Rig jig head. I'm gonna break it all down for you and show you how stoked I am to uh, start fishing these baits and putting a ton in this year. So we have our little Ned tube. This is like a little goby style bait right here. It's got a nice little antennae on the back right there. Two side fins. You can put the jig head inside if you want to dart it around like the old school tube jig to where it's going to hop and change direction. Or you could just rig it like a traditional Ned rig jig and pull it straight across the bottom. Later in the fall, a lot of these lakes have these gobies running around on humps, rock bottoms, a fantastic choice. Even shallow grassy lakes have gobies. You guys would be surprised because you don't randomly catch gobies, how often a goby bait can absolutely murder in, shoot, 99% of the lakes around the country. Then we're gonna move up to our little crawfish. This is about a three inch crawfish right here. Now I wanna tell you guys a little bit of secret here. Everybody knows Ned rigging is great in the winter. Water gets cold, you can Ned rig. Believe it or not, below 50 degrees, Ned rig's insanely good. Above 80 degrees, Ned rig's insanely good too. Why is that? The fish get sluggish when it's too hot. Fish get sluggish when it's too cold. They chomp the Ned rig. The secret, below 50 degrees, a lot of people believe all crawdads start hiding in muddy holes and they, and they hibernate for the winter like a little baby bear. Well, this little sucker wanted his hot chocolate just right. And a lot of these juvenile crawdads, they go down and they hide in those little muddy grassy areas where the grass dies off, there's still roots there. There's a lot of little crawfish and a lot of the time they're in those darker, palish colors in the winter time because they don't get a lot of vitamin A in the plants to feed on. So they turn into those paler green pumpkins, little blue accents to them from a lack of vitamin A. And that size is money. We got our salamander. Now a salamander is fantastic right here because these baits are TPE. So I'll show you. I got one on right here. They grab that salamander by the tail. Boing! They don't tear these suckers. They stay on. They're damn near indestructible. The salamander's fantastic. It sits up real high on the bottom. These baits have that buoyancy to stand up and have the presence to where when you're dragging with the jig head, and I'm gonna talk about that. When you're dragging, it looks natural. When it stops, it floats up. A lot of the time having a little taller presence like the salamander is gonna get you those extra bites versus the two being a shorter body and that crawdad sitting up too. Sometimes that salamander is gonna give it a little longer body. It was great. Red ears were grabbing it today. Little panfish, I go to set and I think the bait probably stretched six foot. They didn't tear my bait. I got it back. Really cool one that I'm excited about. When Jose was developing this, I'm like, dude, that's awesome. So here's the deal. A lot of people don't know when Ned rigging is developed, Ned Kate actually liked to pendulum the bait. We don't just drag a Ned rig along the bottom all the time. He actually picked it up, held the tight line and pendulum it back. Made a far cast, picked it up tight line, and it would pendulum back. This is the Ned Minnow. This can swim and it can be dragged like a Ned Rig. When you stop, it'll sit up like a wounded shad. So this year, you know, when it, the fall comes, you see all the birds going around and like it starts to get too cold, and those shads start to die off. This is going to be insane being drug across the bottom. But when you do that pendulum, it's now gonna swim back, hit the bottom, stand up. If they're tracking it down, hits the bottom and stand, what other bait in the fishing industry can possibly do that? Name one, throw it in the comments. I dare you because it doesn't exist. So let's actually get into the bait in the jig head. This is what I'm super stoked about. Now you guys know the stretchy materials, TPE. Look at that, okay? A lot of the time when you rig on a traditional Ned rig head, there's a little keeper that goes in there or a little catch and it prevents your bait from sliding backwards. But what happens if you don't rig your Ned rig straight? You have to pull it off. So therefore you're tearing the internals and screwing up your bait. Last a lot of fish anyways, but why not make it last a whole lot more? So when it came to the development of this jig head, that was thought about. Now, why can you see that wire? It's simple. Watch me slide this head back. What it's doing, see that little crimp right there? You're actually pushing your Ned bait in there and it's squeezing it down. So therefore, if you pull it off, it's just a little squeeze, little pressure point that's gonna hold it there. But for some reason, if it does get yanked down or you rig it wrong, you can slide it back out and your bait's not tore up. You're gonna notice there's this partial little cavity. You're gonna see that that bait doesn't sit flush with the bottom of the jig head. 
What is that gonna do? It's actually gonna serve sitting in place or dragging a little bit more hydrodynamic. You ever heard of a jig rig where that, it's almost sitting on the bottom, but your bait just sits slightly off the bottom? A little extra cavity right there. When a fish goes to suck it up, there's no bottom retention to where there's no reverse suction on there to where they're gonna suck in your Ned rig easier as well as water's gonna go over there. When you drag, it's gonna flow easier. It's gonna give those little appendages a lot more life-like movement. And I want you to look at this jig head. You're gonna see where I'm tied on is recessed, all right? Notice that eye is recessed. What is that gonna do? It's gonna give you a little bit more protection on your nut. A lot of the time we're dragging Ned rigs in and around sharp rocks, debris, okay? One of my biggest beefs was 90 degree line tie, meaning the line tie was straight up. For vertical fishing, yeah, that can be great, but a Ned Rig isn't always straight up vertical fishing, we're dragging. So instead of 90, it's more about an 85 degree. Now, what does that mean? If you're dragging at 90, you're essentially dragging like this, you're impacting your knot. Now, at this partial angle, at an 85 degree angle, when you bump stuff, it's naturally gonna wanna come up easier. Like a square bill bumping into cover, floating up, this is the angle to where it's gonna come up easier. Your knot's gonna not impact nearly as many pieces of debris down there, which is gonna get your knot, potentially get some harm in there, and break off when you get that good fish. That's a 30,000 style hook right there. Why is that critical? You see a lot of Ned Rig hooks with very, very thin line diameters. Well, when you start to pull a lot and that fish fights a lot, it's such a thin wire, it's almost cutting through the fish. So that 30 thousandths right there is light enough to where just getting tight on the fish is gonna penetrate that hook. It's a little bit stouter, which is gonna hold those fish and it's less likely to cut. I find that diameter to be phenomenal for a hookup to land without tearing a hole through that fish. You've all seen it where someone puts a cold clip in a bass and it tears a big hole in their gill. Essentially, it's the same thing with too thin of a wire hook or too thick of a wire. You're not gonna penetrate if it's too thick, too thin, you're gonna cut right through them. These are four phenomenal Ned bait styles right here, guys. It's gonna put an absolute ton of fish in the boat for you. I'm so stoked for it to get cold or too hot again because I wanna go whacking.